All right, guys, we're on our mm -hmm. second we're on our second service call for the day. We've got a Linux. Now the coils are extremely dirty; they need to be cleaned. But it looks like it's going to be low on refrigerant too. That's not abnormal for Linux. Yep, we're we're definitely low on refrigerant. But this system is probably under warranty. It had locking caps on it. They will not be going back. I, I hate these damn things with a passion. You know, I don't know about you guys, but over here in Louisiana, we don't see people stealing Freon or huffing it. I mean, in your rougher neighborhoods, like at some of the rough apartment complexes maybe, but if you look around, this is a this is a very nice neighborhood. So the chances of that are slim to none. But I think these are required on new these are required on new construction, and this house is only like three years old. So that's probably why they're there. But they but like I said, they're not going back. Oh yeah, we're most definitely low on gas. Yeah, so you can see right here, we got a low suction with a high superheat and we have a low head pressure with no subcooling. That's a classic sign of an undercharged system. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pull the disconnect and I'm gonna stick my head down in here or down here and see if I see any oil spots. Probably not, more than likely it's gonna be in the evaporator. Okay, so we're up at the evaporator or the air handler, I should say. Oh my God, yeah, look at the shape that coils in for such a young age. I've got the H10 warming up. See some rush streaking right there. I just don't know how I'm going off though.
see the dirt coming out? Hey guys, I want I wanted to do another ending to this video too because there's a couple things that y'all missed. I mean, nothing major, but y'all did miss it. So, when I was in the attic running the leak detector, the, the bad thing about the H10 is there's no wand. So, when I don't know if y'all heard me or not on the video, but I said I'm going to have to set you guys down and I turned the camera off because I said on camera I'm going to have to get into a laying position because I had a feeling that the leak was in the back of the coil in the fins. Well, I was using a leak detector with no wand, the H10, you know, so I had to get my arm under there. So I had to lay down to do it. Anyway, uh, so I'm, I think I'm going to purchase me a leak detector with a wand. Now, when I had all those issues with the DTEC 3s from Inficon, I sent them, I sent those back in and they gave me a Stratus as a, hey, sorry about all that. But I gave it to my guy that works for me because he needed the leak detector on his truck. So I think I'm gonna go with the field piece DR58. That's the one with the heated diode sensor. I don't want the infrared sensor. Um, the new field piece, I, they look pretty cool. Uh, I'm not spending that kind of money on another on a Stratus because the H10 is expensive enough. But I'm only going to use it, you know. I'll probably bring both leak detectors in the attic with me because that's just how I am. I prefer much prefer to use the H10, and if the H10 finds it without me having to lay down, then it is what it is. But if I feel like I can't find it, then I'll just whip out the uh, field piece. But. Uh, I mean, I know I could probably take the field P, I mean, the H10 and take the, the end of it and tape it to a brazen rod or a piece of pipe or something, but I mean, that's just a little ridiculous. But anyway, but I did find the leak. Uh, and you know what? H10 may make a wand. Maybe somebody can tell me. I'm not sure if they do or not. Anyway, um, I did find the leak. It was all the way in the back, but in the fence, not, not behind the plate. It was all the way in the back, about that far from the plate. And there was a, a, a section probably this long that was just maybe longer, you know, with the, with the H10. So because of my situation with Linux, we have to see about getting them a coil. And I'll, don't worry, I'll figure out how to get one. There's more. My dad used to always say an old saying, y'all probably heard it, but there's more than one way to skin a cat. So uh, I'll figure out a way to get my hands on a Linux coil because it's under warranty. So with that being said, y'all missed that. And the only other thing y'all missed was me gassing the system up. My wife took a little bit of footage of me cleaning it. Uh, I cleaned the condenser because the condenser was filthy. And uh, I gassed it up to the 
proper, you know, manufacturer charge. You know, I think it was like nine or 10 degrees of subcooling, eight, nine or 10, somewhere in that neighborhood. And uh, got, you know, got the super heat down to like 14, 13, 14. It was cooling very well when I left. So all we got to do now is because of my situation with Linux, since Linux doesn't have the cojones to make things right with me, I'm gonna have to figure out a little creative way to get my hands on an evaporator coil and I'll figure it out. So, uh, well, let's just say it like it is, Linux Parts Plus ain't got the balls to uh, reach out to me and try to make things right. And I hope y'all see this video too. Anyway, so, but don't worry, we'll get them a coil. There's more than one, again, there's more than one way to skin a cat. And uh, that's it, guys. That's the only thing y'all missed on, on, on that video. And I, I apologize about that. I hope y'all enjoyed the video. And uh, thanks for watching. And we'll see y'all on the next one.